Okay, guys, for everybody who is new, I guess for the past six months, you may have not seen some of my videos that I've done prior. This is an interview that I did on dating. This is one out of a series of four. This one is with Maria Paula. Follow along. Hey, what's it on right now? You're watching DC Born Rub on YouTube. Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're located. Thanks for watching. You're watching DC Born Rob Racing Borders. I'm DC Rob. Again, I'm going to jump into this video real quick. This is a redo of my interview with Maria Paula on dating in Colombia. Follow along. Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're located. Thanks for watching. My name is Rob Christian, also known as DC Born Rob, DC Rob, or you can just call me Rob. Again, in this series, I have another special guest. Today, I have Maria with me. Maria, how are you? Hi, fine. Hi, okay, everyone. Well, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. I have a few questions I'm going to run through. It'll be painless. Okay, so I appreciate you being here with me. So first question, how old are you? I'm 27 years old. Okay, you're 27. Have you ever traveled internationally before? No, I haven't. Uh, would you consider yourself a career girl or... Were you raised to be a wife? I don't think I was, I was raised to be a wife. No. no? I'm more independent, and, and I don't see me like being a wife and having that family with with kids and a husband <laughs> to attend. Uh, I think I, I don't. You don't, you think you, you don't right now. You're thinking you won't ever want to get married? I don't know. I, I'll, I'll talk about it sometime. But, <laughs> but in, in this moment of my life, I don't see me there. I'm um, trying to experience new things always and I'm not being um, like, and, uh, stay at home for long times, like attending my family. I I don't. Okay, I got you. I, I understand. Okay, so let's jump into a few questions about dating. From what I know, Colombia doesn't have a hookup culture. In other words, it's not normal to meet somebody at a bar and become intimate that night, or to you know, start kissing or hook up, whatever that means. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I personally haven't had that those experience. Um, I have met people and two or three times after seeing each other, we um stay the night but not in the first time we ever met mm -hmm. i think it's um well but i know it can happen of course um, but i just personally haven't experienced it okay well have you ever dated a foreigner before yeah i dated a uh, german German. Ah, okay. So did he visit Colombia? Yeah, he visited Colombia. He visited. Okay. So how did he meet you? I was, well, there was um, the parties like now um, for the end of the year. And I was with some friends from the, from the college. And we were just having fun and drinking, thinking. Um, so there was this guy and he asked me for something like hour or something like that. And yet we started talking um, the whole night. Then I went home and he went to his and then we started texting and for the time he was here in Colombia, I dated him many months, like two or three, more or less. Okay. 
Good question. Did he speak Spanish? No, he doesn't. He didn't. I, I so, still think that he does not speak Spanish. <laughs> okay, so the key is the fact that you speak English. Otherwise, it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, totally. It did. It happened. Okay, so would you date a foreigner with the intention of getting married? You didn't in this case, but how about in the future? I don't know. I think it depends. I mean, if I get to know somebody who is um, my type, and I think, well, this can be the one, I will think it. And maybe, yes, I will never say never to something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's stay on the hypothetical path. You don't right now, you don't want to get married right now, but in the future, you're leaving that open. If you do decide to date a foreigner, would you want to stay in Colombia or would you want to move to that person's country, Germany, U.S., Canada, wherever? Well, I'll think about it. Um, it will be a great opportunity to leave Colombia, right? Um, but I will have to think for my work here or if I get work there, um, my family, they, um, that they're capable of traveling. For example, my sister and my brother-in-law live in, they live in, in Boston, Massachusetts. All my family were that side of the family lives in there. So if I move to US, I will probably very easy go to visit my sister or go to visit cousins or my aunts or something. My family who lives there or my family who can travel there um, will, will be perfect, will be easy. Only for, for the hours traveling, flying, Etc. But but if I move to Europe, I don't have my family, have very few friends, and so it will be difficult to me for um, for missing the people, missing my family and my friends who I grew up with. So I'll think about it so much. Okay, so it would be easier for the U.S because yeah yeah, yeah for yeah. for my family and in few friends that live there to me so okay well let me ask you this what what do you think about age gap relationship in other words some one partner is younger much younger than the other person the the younger person could be 25 and 60 or 30 and 70 or whatever 20 and 30. What's the difference? What What are your thoughts on age gap relationships? Well, I, I have had many age gap relationships with men older than me. 10 mm -hmm. years, 6 years, 15 years. And I think that um, sometimes when the girl or the boy it's way younger than the partner it can be um grooming way or grooming mode i i think that's dangerous in that way um i think that the person in each case must to experience must to get to know something about life and not only love life but professional life, but a uh, friendship life, traveling things, um, experiencing many, many things to be capable of choosing a person who is way that older. Um, because when you're older than the partner, you have experienced things and the other that the other won't do because of that, because of that gap age. Like they're just um, graduating high school 
or or something and if they're only seeing if they're gonna start the university at a college or something like that and and it's pretty difficult when when there's a person who has known a lot and there's the youngest person who is just trying to learn things for that way i think it's dangerous for the manipulating in some cases it had it has happened um but for example this uh 25 or my age 27 years old and it's dating a 40 man for example i have lived a lot of things um professional i have worked i have dated many other peer, uh, people and have traveled and and i think i have things that i pretty sure that I know I'm gonna do. But the, that in my 20s, if not my 18s or something like that, I wasn't sure. So if I will date a 40 man at my 18s, I haven't lived any of that. I haven't lived my university, my uh, my workings in in nothing because at that age I haven't worked in anything. So I my con my counsel for the people who is younger and knowing older people, it's to wait. It's to wait. It's not a race. Life is not a race. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's better one way than the other? In other words, do you think it's better if the man is older or if the woman is older? No, I think they're the same. There are women who are who have dated younger men and also manipulates. And it's more common if it's a man and a little girl. But but we can see cases in everywhere many mm -hmm. parts of the world here in Colombia there's a region that uh, it's very common and 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 happens a lot it's very common for age gap relationships yeah but in the other way the woman older and the boy younger really there's a region a part of the country yeah, but it's very small the population, but mm -hmm. but you can see, you can see it. Wow. Okay, that that's yeah. new to me. <laughs> <laughs> I find out yeah. where that region is. Um, okay, so I don't know. Are you aware that there are some, in my case, American women who frown on American men? for going abroad to find a woman. In other words, myself or my peers, my other viewers, maybe going to Colombia or Thailand or Philippines, we're leaving the United States and leaving the United States women to go abroad. Do you think it's, I don't know if you're aware of that, but what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's okay for men here to go abroad to find a mate? Well, I think it's our decision for everyone. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe it's um, for the culture. I mean, Latinas are much more um, happier, like more um, talk talkative. How does it say? I, I don't know. The, Friendly. We spoke more. We speak mm -hmm. more. And we we dance and we move and we we, we walk a, a lot and we want to know everything. I mean, I we want to explore, and and I think that's that's why um, many people comes to or many men comes to Latin America 
to meet woman. It's I don't I don't think that's a bad thing in some cases. But sometimes it gets difficult. But but well, it's not a bad thing. To say that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Do, do, do you think it's okay to have a relationship with a man, let's say, in your case, a foreigner who makes more money because he's making money in the U.S. or wherever else? Do you think it's okay to date for money if that man can help elevate your life? Well, I, I will be okay. Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not a bad thing. But I will still working, right? Because the currency in the U.S. and Canada and Europe, it's much more higher than the currency in Colombia. Uh, mm -hmm. um, if my income is way lesser and I see that I can't live with my income until I find another work in another country, in another city or here same city I live in I will I will um I'll be thankful for the help if my partner can help me but it, I, I don't think it's um something like a must like he's have to help me financially um, if I can personally like buy my own things and and pay my rent or something like that i mean if it's for help if it's for a gift i will appreciate it but i don't like to feel like i depend on somebody okay well the second half of that question came from one of my viewers who saw an interview the other day and, and told me to ask, because a lot of men are coming there to find a wife, a wife that will stay home, a wife that will take care of him, take care of the home. If there's kids, the kids too. But a lot of men are coming for that reason. So the, his question was, how much does he have to make to to have his wife there not work in other words the, how much would it have would he have to make for the wife to feel comfortable to not have to work does that make sense well it depends because life here in colombia it's um, it's way difficult in certain places than the others okay i live in mid of colombia and we have Things that are cheaper than others are things that are expensive. For example, rent. The rent here in my city are very expensive. Very, very expensive. And it's getting more expensive in Bogotá, Medellín, Cali, La Costa, Old Cartagena, Santa Marta, um, La Guajira, Choco, like all the Pacific. Mm -hmm. It's getting more expensive because of that. That is the gentrification that we're living in from five, ten years, more or less. Because um, we're, we're seeing, for example, the, the Airbnbs. I personally had one. I was administrating one. Uh, before the pandemic, and, and and it was a lot, a lot, a lot of people from the U.S., from Venezuela, from Canada, from Europe, even from here, from Colombia too, but a lot of people renting the Airbnb because the hotels were way much expensive or were far from the world um looking for things or exploring or they just simply wanted to rent there and 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 that okay but for for me well in my home 
the income, well, I live with my mom. My, it, the income between the two of us, it's about 6 million pesos, which will be like um, $1,200, I guess, more or less. And, okay. and we live pretty, pretty nice. It's a nice neighbor, and we we live with a comp, we comfortably, and 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 it's okay. But I think that when families are much grown, um, like they have more kids, it's the man and the, the husband and the wife and two three kids or more, there will be much more difficult for uh for example the elementary school the the college the university and there's a lot of things that the parent have has to supply for a lot of years so it depends on the age of the kids of the the city they live in, the neighbor they live in. So, for example, here in my in my city, a family of four or five persons, you will need an income of more or less seven million, eight million dollars per month. No oh, dollars. No, I'm sorry, pesos per month. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a lot of people around the world watch TV, watch social media. They see the United States. They watch all these TV shows with us with boats and all these expensive things, and they think everybody here is rich. Do you think that everybody in the United States is rich? Or are you aware that we're really struggling over here, too, just on a different yeah. level? Yeah, of course. Um, I think that the same. It's the currency, the dollar high in some levels and, and pesos like down all the time. We we have seen that the one dollar here it's um goes to record limits and we're like, oh my god, how can we live with a dollar so much expensive but from some six months more or less we have seen the dollar like going down in relation with the pesos colombianos and we and we even see like there's a lot going on in the world uh, that difficult in the economy not also here there in the us in europe in africa asia in the world in the whole world there's a difficult in the, for the economy as i was saying my sister lives there and um mm -hmm. she works a lot she has been living there for over a year now and for the first eight months they were dealing whole lot to pay three months of rent and and were working there as out until they found a home very well was cheap um comfortable and it was uh near the from the from the school of my nephew and and now they have like a uh, stability and in, in the economy for now on but in the first days they were struggling so hard even having our family there we couldn't like 
get there and with an instability in the same moment they arrived. They have to look and wait now, like um, saving, saving money for the rent, for the college, for the institutions, for the transport, for clothes. And so for the beginning, it was very difficult to start in another country. Even though we have family, we have friends, we have any person there who can help us, there's difficult. And um, I, don't, I don't think that everybody is, is rich. I think that it's for the currency that they have like these opportunities. And if we um, come, if they come to Colombia and watch us for what we win, which is the, which is the minimum salary here in Colombia, I think many people in the US will be like, wow, it's, it's incredible, my God. How do you live with that? And so, and so it will be difficult, but us, we are just, um, how does it say? We're, we have adjusted, adjust to that situation. Okay, is your brother-in-law American? No. No? Well, it, he has the green card. He's Colombian. Okay. Okay. So they moved, they, they were married in Colombia and then moved to the United States. They were living here together, but they were not married. Married. They mm -hmm. married in April, but they married here, there. Okay. Okay. So next question. Do, do you believe that it's the man's responsibility to pay for the bills, to pay the finances? I kind of know your answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. No, I don't think so. I think uh, if I have an income um, let me say, bigger, like mm -hmm. I, I, I will pay my things and I will help my partner. But I, I don't think so. I think that we perfectly can uh, divide. That counts. Okay. Well, what do you think of gender roles in a relationship? Meaning, what's the role of the woman versus what's the role of the man? I think we have to have the same roles. Um, if I work um, from home, I can perfectly have my things or the things in home um, clean and I can make a food for not buying outside and we can and I can perfectly do those things and like scheduling example in the morning I will clean my my house like I I will I will do the breakfast and then I will work two or three hours and then I'll cook the lunch then I can work four hours on, on the afternoon and then just relax and, and, and stop doing my work to to relax in home okay but if I work the whole day in an office outside my home and my, for example, my partner has to do the same, not working home, but having to work in an office, in, in a building, in something, um, we'll have the same things to do. Like we have to have the house clean then, well, Let's take an hour or two to clean something in the house. But, but I think that we all should have the same roles. Um, it's not that, well, it's a thought very, very old that 
we have that the women it's the only one that cook that um, that do things in home and or stays at home making things a lot a lot of things for attending the husband i have seen a lot of men living by themselves alone um making things from the home like like cleaning house or or aromatizing buying things for the house and and i think that we could share it's just that if i work more and i gain more i will pay for more things okay and but but i don't think that if i work all day i have to come to home and um uh, uh, and do the dishes i i i now i'm tired i i want to do something else but but if i know that my partner also gets tired and i get earlier i perfectly i can perfectly do things or or the other way or the other way yeah i think we should be the same equal okay so uh, this and the next question came from another viewer too after the fact he wanted me to ask how pervasive is social media there in other words um would you say the social media is helping to change the attitudes and beliefs and policies there yeah yeah of course we have seen um a lot of things we i mean um we have the regions here now uh, that we don't get to know until we get the social media um i'm seeing that since since there's facebook and and twitter and instagram those social media apps um there's people trying to know better our country like i have many friends that born in another city and came here to study but knew um some beaches and and they say whoa i have always lived in in pasto for example came to manizales to study and then uh i knew that there's a beach over the pacific like from choco and we get to know better and with the photos we we share we post um there's many much more easy for us to see and like say well i can go there um i can know this or even uh, the political life we have seen only things that happens in bogota because it's the center and it's where is the senate stays and the president he is just doing everything from there and and the people outside bogota it's like well this is happening and what are you doing there and since the social media exists um we're much more critical about the policies and about um things that are affecting colombia and their in our images as colombians in the in the exterior Okay. Let me let me sw switch it up a little bit and ask you what do you think about the druggings that are currently going on in major cities and even smaller cities too with scopolamine the devil's breath. What do you think about the tourists or visitors and expats that are getting targeted? Uh I think that that's awful. It's a, they're creating a a terrible image for some Colombians. because 
uh, nobody likes to be generalized and included in, oh, they're um, making people a scopolamine and, and, and uh, stealing their things and using their credit cards and, and using a lot of things to buying things and, and for traveling or for something that can be illegal for the, for the way it came. I mean, if I use a stolen credit card, I'm making something illegal. It's not only buying something, it's stealing for somebody and using that, that that's a terrible image. Um, and I feel bad, I am a lawyer. And when I was uh, starting my, my career, um, we have many, many stories about that, about the, that cases. Um, my professor told us like, well, there was these people here in Manizales, it happened. It happened more in these kind of cities. We have to be more aware. And as lawyers, we have to uh, make something to prevent people, not only uh, people from international countries, but also here in Colombia, because happens here with other Colombians and happens a lot um, in, in places that are like the partying places. Now, I think it's an awful image and I hope it change soon. When you said that you as an attorney are tasked with doing something, what exactly can you do to help prevent it? Well, I think that it um, will, will be more from the education. As, as an attorney, I can easily make publicity about cases of, of that drugging and making people stay alert to not is expanding too much in some places, in the same places, or um, be careful who they talk to. Like, I, I can see perfectly when one person is um, like giving me bad vibes and, and, and I'm kind of getting uncomfortable. I think that we all have a sick thing. And when we feel like we're not getting comfortable in, in a place, in a party or something, um, there's a lot of people we can ask for help. But, but I, I have to show the publicity and, and show some cases, even though they're cruel, we must aware because this doesn't happen only here in Colombia. It happens everywhere and it can happen to everyone. But um, but it's also like um, a must for us as um, how does it say um, as the hosts we have to share the image that we are not only drug dealers or um, prostitutes or or um, dealers, I don't know. Um, we can also help a lot of people. We can also teach and we can 
and, and we can give example with the okay. well mm -hmm. we we need help from our end because since I have to report on things like that. As a matter of fact, today I posted a video that a priest was drugged and robbed and died on Setenta in Medellin. Yeah. Um, numerous other uh, uh, foreigners have been killed in the past year or so, at least five or six that I reported on, and one of which we knew, I mean, was a friend. Um, I have at least three stories in my email right now of other guys that have gotten drugged but didn't go to the police. So, I mean, I'm trying to encourage people to go to the police, get that form filled out. Make sure you try to get the girl. If it's a girl, get her uh, cedula, get her uh, ID information. But is there any other advice you can give to a guy who's coming to Colombia, anywhere in Colombia, to make sure that he doesn't fall prey? Well, um, for the first, it's not to come alone. I mean, for everyone, be a man, be a woman, be an old man, an older woman, a young person, whatever, is to not come alone if they don't know anything about this country. Um, to buy things like, um, in places that they feel safe and and to go to places with um with good um statics statics yeah um and the most most important for me it's to travel with somebody who they trust in even if it is the First play, first time they come or they travel. At least having someone that I know, that I can talk to, and that I can ask, like, do you think this can be safe? How 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 do you see this? Like having another point of view, it will be mm -hmm. very much safe for everybody. Okay, let, let me switch it up again. Just a few more questions, but uh, prostitution is legal in Colombia. What are your thoughts and beliefs on it? Well, I think it's a work like um, many more. It's legal over 18 years when we were there now adults. Mm -hmm. um, but I have seen a lot, a lot, a lot of cases that um, that where the girls got raped or got drugged or got killed. Poor people that are not um, are not thinking the same, but. Mm, well, other things that make me like worry about that condition of work is that they are very, very vulnerable to uh, get an ETS or something, and 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 they have family. I, we have to think about the family, not only if they have kids, but their parents brothers mm -hmm. and and many more people that care about them um i think it's 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 good like um to find a way to explore their bodies and to and to um know something more about them but it's dangerous it's dangerous for everyone who is um making that job because is there I was like I was saying um they're very vulnerable and they in most of the cases they uh come from very 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 uh poor places poor neighbors poor families 
they mm -hmm. don't have the opportunity to study and they get to know the drugs in you know, each but it's so young but it's like it's the first thing they know they don't know how to read but they try drugs and they know drugs and all drugs and it's it's way difficult to see them um, like standing waiting for somebody that picks them and not knowing if they will come back or how will they come back that's very very difficult to see okay well so a lot of men who go to Colombia go for the women. Some go to meet a good woman, want to settle down and marry. They think the traditional wife is there, which we're finding out there's <laughs> there are differences there. Um, but then there's some that come for just straight prostitution. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts about tourists coming in for sex, for, for prostitution? I think that they're predators. I mean, in the whole world are prostitution. Why do they have to come to an underdeveloped country that where the kids from 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 are sold? by sometimes their own parents or they use them only for sexual interests. I think that's insane. It's scary. And and it, it's very, very sad that we only changed our image from Pablo Escobar to there are cute girls, beautiful girls, and that's the whole word that they're meaning. There are girls, and they do come for girls. It's not like they have an app and say, oh, I like this one girl, I want to go to meet her. No, they come specifically to some cities looking for young girls to have sex with them and to pay them. I'm not talking about underage kids. If anybody deals in underage, just kill them, throw them away. That's personal belief. Be done with them. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, the legal prostitution. Okay. And a, a legal, a grown adult from another country coming there to be with a grown adult there. Um, people go because, I mean, let's face it, Colombian women, I mean, I've been around the world. I got to say, Colombia has some beautiful women. I mean, it's just, you know, I just got back from Thailand, beautiful women, but Colombia has some beautiful women. So I think the proximity of the United States to Colombia is one thing. The cost it takes to get there for some, is, it's not a lot. You can get there for Florida for a couple of hundred bucks. And then when you get there, the dollar's strong. But I'm talking about adults, so not have anything to do with underage, kill all of them. <laughs> that's just that's just my personal view. Be done with them. I'm talking, and not the parents and all that sick, depraved. No, I'm talking about just a, a legally aged man going there to be with a legally aged woman. What are your thoughts? Well, I I, I have the same thought that. Um, practicing the prostitution like they will always be in danger it's not safe not only for um the the ets's or for something like that it's like for the person who comes it's um the places they take the the women and there's a lot of things that can happen well 
some of them are very lucky because they are safe. Like they do their work, they do their sexual thing and come back to their place like in good conditions. But there are another ones that doesn't believe that, that doesn't leave that because because of the dogs or from some men, not only in the US, but around the world that think that the prostitution it's something immoral. And well, I don't I don't see like I don't see it like a bad job. I mean everyone has its necessities and uh, for the lack of, of education many people can get there. Um, but that I, I don't feel it as a bad thing if the the man only comes to just have sex and to pay for it. It's like Hey, I know I saw you and I thought you're beautiful. Um, can we have sex? I paid. And the girl says, okay, never mind. I'll, I'll get the money. I, I think it's not something bad. Mm -hmm. But where, when they are um, working, like for um, constantly on the prostitution it's it becomes dangerous for them not only women but men too mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier you said not only ets is that a sexually transmitted disease uh-huh okay i didn't recognize ets okay ETS, it's just in, in in spanish it's ets okay okay so, well, let, let me switch it back then to coming to find a, a good woman. I know, and I tell guys, you know, you can meet a good looking girl here at the grocery store. You can meet a good looking girl there at the Jumbo or the Corullo, <laughs> the Exito. They are everywhere. But so if, if I'm coming to find a good woman in Colombia, what city would you tell a man to go to to find a, a wife? find a wife I think um, I think in Bukaramanga really yeah I, I, have, I haven't um, heard about anyone like um, rejecting or getting mad for the women there for, no Really? But in Medellin and in Bogota, for example, Bogota, the women are very, very independent. And Medellin, the women are looking for husbands, but not, I'm not saying they're bad wives, but I don't see them much as wives because the same, it's a big city that in, in which the culture is changing and and making the people more independent too. What what did you say about Bogota that they are independent or not? The women. Mm -hmm. No, the women are more independent. Oh, they are. Okay. So they're less liable. But and when I hear independent, when I hear independent, it sounds like a woman that doesn't need a man. Do you agree that with doesn't that? Want it. That doesn't, that want, doesn't it. want it. Okay. Yeah, like like having for yeah, okay. Of well, or doesn't need it. Like that's it isn't looking for him desperately or or doesn't or isn't looking for a husband mm -hmm. in the whole meaning of the world. Okay, so so they're they're more independent in Bogota than they are in Medellin. Mm-hmm. But Medellin, you don't see them really as being wives. No, I don't. How so? I have many family there, uh, many women cousins and friends, women friends. 
and I I don't see them see them like being wives. For example, my cousins only there are four women and only one is married. The only ones are the other ones are um with boyfriends, long-term boyfriends or or something, but they're not married or they even uh they're not even living together they just pass the time and uh for my friends it's the same they have long-term boyfriends girlfriends but no in a relationship about getting married it's not we don't see is, that anymore well is that because they're not being proposed to or because they're just saying no, no? they just say no they just like no, I don't want to. Let's stay as we're being going. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there you go, guys. <laughs> you may get a wife in Colombia, but she may not want to be one. And then <laughs> both are going to be a little tougher, I guess. Go so, okay. travel to all Colombia. Go to no Colombia. You're welcome here anytime. Um, enjoy, enjoy your country, enjoy our cities, and enjoy our nature, and enjoy our people. It was very joyful, mm -hmm. but um, don't only come for sex or drugs. <laughs> exactly. When when I first came, I came for business. Uh, when I found out where it was, they told me, "Okay, I, I'm located. I'm in Colombia." Not one thing. Oh, Colombia, you know, we remember that history. And so, okay, so I'm still planning. On, okay, we're part of uh, Colombia, Medellin. I thought, okay, that doesn't make it any better. I'm starting, and this is three and a half years ago. No, this is five and a half years ago, the first time I came. And then when I got there, I fell in love with the place. It was around Christmas time. They were riding around Parque Yetta, shooting foam. I guess school was over. It was just an, an amazing, the weather was incredible, which is still incredible. Yeah. It, was, it was there a month and a half ago. Beautiful weather every day, never had a problem. Flies, no flies, no bugs. Come on, you don't have bugs. Well, here we get what? bitten and eaten in Thailand. Oh my God, I got just, just sitting outside. I got, you have to put on bug spray there. There's no bugs. The weather's so good. I left my balcony open. So my my favorites were the weather, the strength of the dollar. Okay, the women were good looking, but I thought maybe I'd get back with my ex girlfriend anyway, and so I didn't mess around. So I, you know, I never even noticed. I mean, I noticed good looking women. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> I didn't, you know, partake because. I thought possibly I'd, I'd get back together. But so, you know, money, weather, um, cost of living is low. You can, I mean, come on, it's day and night from there to here. What you would pay there for an apartment versus here. I mean, what I pay for this, I could be living very well uh, there. Um, but so people have that thought that it's that dangerous, that it's that bad and not until you go there do you realize that it is it's amazing but you guys have been pigeonholed because of the girls because you guys are so beautiful you girls are so beautiful the guys are coming from all around the world and i i told uh, someone the other day that i'm from the u.s i thought 95 percent of my viewers would be from the u.s 60 percent are from the u.s another 40 percent are from around the world there are people, I get emails from Dubai, Australia, uh, Canada, a lot of people from Canada, Mexico. They all want to go to Colombia. What if anybody is going to Colombia for the first time, say, for instance, an American is going to Colombia for the first time, what would they need to do to prepare themselves for the trip? Well, um, let's start for the weather. Here in Colombia, we don't have the same weather everywhere. Like you have the coast and there's very, very warm. There's much more sun and the temperatures are very high. 
um, there's this middle part of Colombia that is um, sunny, but also cloudy and um, it's raining sometimes. Um, you have the Pacific that in Pacific, in some places like Chocó, Darien, that are the limits with Panama, they're very rainy, very, very rainy. They're that I think it's the city that rains every day of the year, every day, every day, every day of the year, it's raining. There's a place of that. There's um, Llanos Orientales that are also warm because they don't have trees, for example. They're just plain. And um, there's, um, what else? In the south of Colombia, it's, it's much more um, colder than the north of Colombia. And for the weather, they have to be prepared. For example, here in my city that calls Manizales, we have the sunny morning and in the middle of, of the afternoon, you can't even tell when or how it starts raining. It's like, what, when? I, I'm not even prepared. So they have to know that. Um, well, what other things? Um, the food, they have to try all the food and they have, and they have to come with an empty stomach always to uh, everywhere because everybody comes here to Colombia and watch us like eating our food and they say like, how can you eat that much and, and you don't get fat? How is it possible? And we're like, how do, you? it's because you only eat burgers and we eat a lot of things. We have many different things. I was talking to a friend yesterday that he is from here, but he was traveling to another city and he was saying, well, I, I, I can't eat potatoes because that potatoes there, there are only two types. And, and, and here there are four or five types of potatoes and they're so much different. Like they only um, cook him like with salt and some water and that's it. But here you have uh, potatoes, smashed potatoes, you have the fried potatoes, you have a lot of ways to prepare them. And it's not only for that, it's the whole food. There's a lot of ways to prepare them. And so you have to try everything, try everything. Um, there are places that are fuller than others. So they can experience the same things in the places that are more empty that in those other places because they can be more expensive or something like that. Um, for general, yeah, we are very, very kind and we are um, joyful. We're um, always treating the other person's well. Um, and so that's the image we all, one from anybody from any part of the world know from Colombia that we're mm -hmm. that we're happy for everything. We can tell people are friendly. People have walked me to the store. Oh, let me show you where this is. It's up the street. Turn. Let me come with you and walk with me. <laughs> and yeah. I use my little bit of Spanish too, but everybody is exceptionally friendly. But real quick, one more question. But I will tell you the, the top three things I teach my viewers to learn or to know or to take with them to Colombia. One, learn Spanish. Two, learn Spanish. Three, <laughs> learn Spanish. You need to speak Spanish. It will be a struggle. Now, 
you see me doing these interviews and Maria speaks great English, but everybody doesn't. So believe it, especially in Medellin, everybody doesn't. So right quick, my, my last question though for you, Maria, is what do you think of the case of John Poulos? He's the guy that's accused of murdering uh, Valentina Tres Palacios. What do you think of that whole story? And is it, is it affecting the thoughts of Colombians about Americans because of him? Well, I don't think that's only uh, from Americans. I We have in Colombia experienced a lot, a lot of cases from feminicides. It, it's very sad. About this case of Jampolos and Valentina, we have uh, known so many things that in, aren't um, necessary to know. For example, that uh, she was talking to other guys. We, we, we don't need to know that, but it was important for us to know that he was um, having a divorce process and that he has a kid with cancer, who's dealing with, with cancer. Um, but it's very sad because he came to Colombia to know Valentina, to marry her. She trusted him and his personality, his psychotic personality just jump out out of nowhere. And he in one day decided to kill her. And um, it, was, it, it was traumatizing. I say it, it's not um, it's not going to change the image we have from the Americans. We know that the Americans are not all like that, like John Polos or mm. many other killers. But it's a sad case because um, she was so young. She has she had only twenty three years old, I guess, and. Um, she was um she had a career so 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 strong and she was getting to be known in in other countries and and was a very very beautiful woman that just have the bad luck to get to know this guy and i think we can prevent that but but it's difficult and she was uh, so happy with him she trusted him and he betrayed that trust that she gave him and that in her family gave him to to doing this awful case mm -hmm. okay well, I, I appreciate you sharing, and thank you so much for, for taking this time with me. Uh, Maria, did did I miss anything? Do you think I missed any questions, or do you think there's, or, or is there anything that you wanted to say to my viewers directly that I didn't ask? No, I don't think it's it's good. Thank you so much for having me and for this invitation. Um, I hope we can get to talk about anything else any anytime soon. Um, to your viewers, thank you so much. I hope I, my interview was um, like um, helpful, helpful for um, to get to know more about women dating and Colombia. Exactly, it has been. It has been for me too. Let me scroll back up to the to my first one. Let's see. Uh, to, 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 okay, um, it's not a hookup culture. You need to be uh, introduced by uh, family and friends. So I'm telling everybody I know in Colombia, you got to hook me up. You have to introduce me, <laughs> introduce <laughs> me to, to a, a girl down there. So keep me in your mind um, in the future. Okay, <laughs> I will. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much. Have a good evening, and we'll talk soon. Thank you so much to you. Have a great okay. night. Bye. Thank you. you Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of the flight crew, thank you for flying with us, and have a pleasant day.
thanks for hitting like you did the right thing by hitting like thanks for hitting like thanks for hitting like this is born rob